Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. Well, as we all know, entrepreneurs are drivers of economic growth, uh, job creation, and they're also drivers of innovation. In Hawaii, we have a thriving community of entrepreneurs. We have High Beam, we have, um, I think it's called HVCA, Hawaii Venture Capital Association. And we also even have programs that encourage uh, youngsters from middle school to high schools to become entrepreneurs. They are a rare spe uh, species. They're cre creative, resilient, they're passionate. Now, when, uh, for a lot of people, when we think about successful entrepreneurs, we, of course, immediately think about uh, Silicon Valley. Um, now, today, I'm very fortunate to invite one of these successful entrepreneurs. Not only is he creative, resilient, passionate, he's a risk taker, he's a big dreamer, he builds. And the person I'm referring to is Art Norens. He is the CEO and founder of No One. Thank you so much for joining me on my show. As I said, it is really an honor to have you, um, someone so successful and also very global-minded. Um, as I mentioned, I'd love to hear all about your uh, philanthropic initiatives. So um, thank First you for all, coming Alice, to the show. Thank you very, very much. This is an honor, and it's great to be here. And, and uh, I feel like I'm home. You know, Hawaii, I'm originally from the Midwest, mm -hmm. from Indiana, but my true home is Hawaii. So uh, thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, um, when we first met, I think that was about eight, year, eight years, eight months ago in yeah. February. Um, I know that you've done a lot. I saw your biography, um, your, your bio, and uh, you've uh, founded and president of this company, Nor One. Now, I guess I read that this is an internet company, and you work with uh, travel suppliers looking for ways to um, innovative ways to generate more revenue, and you also help them work with travelers to optimize their travel experience, right? That's kind of how I understood it. You're spot on. So, Alice, uh, so I've always had a kind of entrepreneurial bent. I've got a lot of loose screws in my head. And so um, I, I've just, with this is my second company. In my mm. first company, I had traveled north of 200 nights a year in hotel rooms. Wow. You know, a million miler on uh, Singapore Airlines, Lufthansa. And so I stayed a lot in, in, in hotels. And I'm also a very much of a value conscious uh, consumer. And so I'm the guy that likes to book the least expensive hotel room, but then try to get free upgrades. And so that was the seed for my company is um, a way that a consumer like you or me can book a standard room, but have an opportunity to go up to a presidential suite for really great value, not paying the full price. Mm -hmm. And um, so you have a great stay at a great value. The hotel captures extra incremental revenue that they wouldn't have caught otherwise. And um, it's uh, just a real win-win-win proposition. So um, Tell us a little bit more about the company. And if producer, could you actually bring up this photo? I think it's um, arts team at Nor One. But how long ago did you start that company? Um, yeah, that's a great photo here. You, you can see us mm -hmm. at the bowling alley. We, we mm -hmm. do more than just bowl. Um, so started the company uh, 10 years ago, actually, um, you know, had the idea, but I had never worked in the hospitality um, or, or, or had an internet company. And so had this idea of how to, to better sell premium rooms. So what I first did is actually I went, I had some relationships in Europe, and um, I knew some of the senior executives at a hotel group called Move and Pick. Um, you guys may know their ice cream. And mm -hmm. um, actually, I shared with them my idea, and they really liked it. And then, but I said, hey, I never worked in this industry. Uh, would you mind if I worked at some of your hotels to kind of learn the, the business from the wow. bottom up? And so um, lived in uh, Zurich, Switzerland uh, for a while and, and in Geneva and worked at their hotels and then also in Berlin. And um, from that, we've, we've grown tremendously. You know, now we, we have uh, business in over 70 countries, 30 plus currencies. Um, and so it's been a really fantastic journey. But it, you gotta crawl before you walk, before you run, and so, yeah. See, because um, I, I know a little bit about that because you did a fantastic presentation at the TED Talk at Purdue U. Um, but let me ask you one, a, a few more questions about the company. So maybe give us an update because I know you mentioned that you've got, um, it's a global company you deal with in different uh, currencies. Um, who are some of your customers and what's the latest? 
Perfect. Well, first of all, I give a big shout out to our, our big customers like Hilton Corporation, uh, Carlson, Intercontinental Hotels Group. We have a plethora of just really loyal um, customers. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we start off with move and pick hotels. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, this is a European hotel group that has a lot of properties in the Middle East. And then after we started getting traction with them, then we picked up Hilton. And, and then we got a pretty sizable investment for some pretty key investors from the likes of Goldman Sachs uh, to Excel Ventures, which is a uh, you know, big in, uh, shareholder in Facebook and, and Groupon. Mm -hmm. And um, with that investment, we continued to take our, our I call it our win-win business model because we have a performance-based revenue model. If, if we don't generate incremental revenue for our hotels, we don't get paid. So um, there's no risk to the hotels um, by using our system. Okay. And so um, the hotels continue to adopt our solution. Um, and, you know, I'm really big on relationships. Relationships are everything. And so, you know, really developed long-term solid relationships with our big hotel groups, which then we rolled out the solution to not only like Hilton, but all their, their brands like Conrad, Hilton International. And, um, and so, yeah, now we have like a core, you know, that's the big French hotel group. You may be familiar with their brands like Sofitel and mm -hmm, Pullman. Yes. Um, also Wyndham Hotel Groups. Um, a lot of the premium uh, hotel groups like Kapinski, which is um, a, a European group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we continue to expand globally. Most of these chains, though headquartered maybe in, in, in Europe or in the United States, mm -hmm. have properties globally. Mm -hmm. Um, as our company has also matured, we become much more of a business intelligence analytics company. And what does that mean is making the right offer at the right time, at the right price, customized and personalized to you, Alice. Mm -hmm. we, we look at how you've bought hotel rooms in the past, mm -hmm. and like we see that you maybe like spa offers, but you don't like restaurant offers, so let's not waste time giving Alice you know, spa, uh, restaurant offers, let's give her spa offers. So, so how do you do that? Um, you're talking about business analytics, and I know that when I first met you, we had a little discussion on that. Um, so how do you do that? How can you um, identify, you know, how do you profile a customer then? So think of it like this, mm -hmm. and this is the big, you know, you go to Silicon Valley, you go around the world, the, mm -hmm. the, the talk today is, you know, big data. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, when you're making a hotel booking, mm -hmm. you know, your, you know, various offers are being put in front of you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything from a standard room to an ocean view suite to a presidential suite. And it's important to see what Alice picks. You know, it's interesting. So Alice is making a reservation at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. And she picks, you know, the, the, the least expensive room, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And so we have a profile about Alice, and we check that, like, hey, Alice picked the standard room at this price point. Yet when she flies and, and, and stays at the Hilton, let's say you don't live here, but you stay at the Hilton Hawaiian Village mm -hmm. um, in, in Honolulu, and you're staying here not for one night, but you're staying here for seven nights, you buy a junior suite. Mm -hmm. And the junior suite is, like, whatever, $1,000 a night. So we start learning mm -hmm. about Alice. We start learning that you know she she has the capability to pay mm -hmm. a lot more for a room. Mm -hmm. She her 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 buying behavior is different when she's staying at a hotel for seven nights mm -hmm. versus just one night. Mm -hmm. And um, so you keep collecting all this information. And and as you collect more and more of this information, you you start really understanding actually Alice better than maybe she even understands herself. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> can't imagine that. Well, but I'm sure that it's um, not only a hospitality industry is doing that. And as you said, um, different industries, they are looking at the big data. Um, so I guess uh, you have somebody in your office in Silicon Valley who focus on this type of information then. Correct. Yeah. We have a, a big part of our, our, our you know, where, where does our money go mm -hmm. in our company is we have a lot of data scientists and data engineers. Um, and this is kind of uh, an intersection. This is what the really special time where we are in technological advancement nowadays is, you know, is one having the technology to capture all this data. Mm -hmm. But then you have to be able to extract this data and pull out the, the, the diamonds of mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. And so having these, these people that are, you know, statistics majors that are, you know, uh, focusing on big data. Mm -hmm. So, and this all has to happen in real time. So as you're making a reservation, we have to look at your historical buying behavior. Mm -hmm. We have to look at all this 
these other information and from that what is the right offer to give to you so we invest heavily in engineers data scientists data engineers and so for all of you uh, kids out there that are looking at or at college and looking for where where if you want to get a job a really good job go into data engineering data science uh, huge demand like at Facebook Google all these companies Thank you for saying that. You just stole my word because I was, I was saying that's an aside because um, I guess a couple of weeks ago I interviewed somebody from uh, the um, NSA, National Security Agency. Uh -huh. They were talking about sci uh, cybersecurity, but uh, big data, data scientists, engineers, they are important too, and certainly these are professions that I didn't know about when I was growing up. And now, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> but you talk so well about the... Um, you seem to know so so much about that. But I guess over a long of, time, yeah. I, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, um, but over time you, you, you learn and, and evolve and, and uh, yeah, so. That's interesting. Loose screws and <laughs> not the sharp, what did you say? What, not the, not sh the sharpest knife in the drawer. I think one of my greatest strengths mm -hmm. and I, with a lot of the entrepreneurs mm -hmm. is, is they're, 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 they're not smart enough to get off the field, is that they, they're persistent and they, you know, if there's a way, mm -hmm. uh, with, where there's a will, there's a way, and, and just keep on trying and constantly trying to learn and never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, ever give up. That's, uh, I that's like a key. that. Where there's a will, there is a way. And exactly. I know that your presentation was also based on that, and I kind of stole that title for mine here. Now, um, I know. At the beginning, you said hospitality is really not your background, but you work at different positions. So um, we're coming on a short break. So after that, I'd like you to tell us a little bit more about you know, your other successful ventures. Um, and perhaps more importantly, how, how did you get into all of this? <laughs> Fantastic. Look forward to doing so. Wonderful. Perfect. My guest today is Art Norens, the founder and CEO of NorOne. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. We'll be right back after the break. Aloha. My name is Jim Sean, and I'm host of a show called Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. Each week, live streaming at noon on Think Tech Hawaii, we interview people who have special insights into education from early education through K-12, all the way through higher education and beyond. Both public and private are areas we're interested in. We dig deeper. We try to find out uh, what it's really like to be involved in making change, advocating for it, how you reform, what people's philosophies are in reforming it. Uh, as I said, we're live streaming every Wednesday at noon on Think Tech Hawaii. And later on, you can find these interviews on YouTube and on the Hawaii Educational Policy Center website. We hope you join us as many times as possible. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. If you're just joining us, my guest today is Art Norens, CEO and founder of NorOne, a very successful entrepreneur from the Silicon Valley. So before the break, uh, we were talking about your company, NorOne, and about analytics, and um, you've been doing really fantastically with your business. Now, of course, you've done other things, uh, not just uh, internet companies. So tell us about the other successful business or venture that you were involved in. So I went, I'm originally from the Midwest, mm -hmm. and I went to school at Purdue University, got an engineering degree, came out of Purdue. Actually, my first job was I was in the air conditioning business, selling uh, commercial air conditioning systems, and um, was 100% commissioned salesman there. And, and quickly what I learned is they were buying from me, not from the company I was working at. You know, as an aside, um, I think we all have very... Um stereotype about engineers. You're certainly not one of them. Maybe that's why you did so well as a sales engineer. I remember hearing that. I said, no, I, yeah. Um, no, right? great point. I, I don't think I fall. I look at, first of all, I love engineers. They're great. And, and um, I, I probably am not the traditional engineer. Um, you know, I love, first and foremost, I love people. Mm -hmm. And, and um, yeah, and I love to build. Mm -hmm. and, and I love to build with people. I want to be part of something much bigger than myself. And so, you know, going back, you had asked me kind of what, what happened before Nor One in my internet company. Well, um, I started an air conditioning company mm -hmm. where we did specialized air conditioning for clean rooms and semiconductor chip manufacturing, biotech facilities, 
but our factory was actually is is actually located in southern Germany. Mm -hmm. So we were doing installations globally, and this is why I traveled so much is we were doing this work all over the world. And um, as I was building the air conditioning company, I actually got a lot more confidence in myself. And I actually, to all of you out there, that's what the, the, the whole Super Bowl is about, is getting confidence in yourself and believing in yourself. And I saw you know, what we could do. We built a really nice company. And so actually, I started dreaming bigger. And um, one of the things that ever since I was a little kid, for whatever reason, I've always been passionate about the airline industry. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to start my own airline. I, I, I've learned, I, I conquered the air conditioning world. Now I'm going to start my own airline. I want to start a, an international airline. And so, so I tried to raise money, uh, actually, you know, half a billion dollars to get an airline off the ground. And so, um, as you can see, I didn't get the airline off the ground. Um, what I learned from it, I met a lot of people, met a lot of investors. Okay. And I remember from one investor, they told me, hey, Art, you know what the quickest way to become a millionaire is? And I go, no, what? It's to be an, a billionaire. Mm -hmm. and, and invest in an airline. So I, I don't want to offend any airlines out there, um, <laughs> Hawaiian Airlines, United. You know, I'm a, I, I live on your guys' planes, so I'm not saying that. So, but they did say they really liked part of my business plan. Okay. My airline business plan was NOR1. Okay. It was um, a better way to upgrade uh, passengers on flights mm -hmm. to business class and first class. Okay. And so it's interesting. When I started NOR1, actually we learned it's the, the, the opportunity for growth was better in the hotel space, in the hospitality space. Oh. But I just thought I'd share that with you, Alice, and your viewers, because normally the entrepreneurial life is not the most <laughs> straight arrow. Um, it's, it's adapting, being flexible, listening to your heart, being passionate. Um, and so, yeah, so I went from you know, corn-fed kid from Indiana to air conditioning business, living in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, to trying to start an airline, to then starting my internet company, which we then actually, then I spent a lot of time in Europe. And um, yeah, and now I'm here with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there are a lot of questions that I like to ask, but since we have time constraint here, I can do another two hour interview <laughs> with you. Um, Nor One, where did that come from? From your last name, N-O-R? Yes, yeah, so Nor One came from my, you know, so, I had a, other, a lot of other names mm. that I thought for the, the company mm. when I was just founding it. Mm. But um, the domain names were taken. Um, mm. Someone had already bought the domain name. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I talked to some of these people and they wanted to sell the domain name for me for $25,000 mm. or $50,000. Mm. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to pay. You know, I don't know if I even have a business idea. I'm by myself to spend it, write a check for $25,000. Didn't seem smart. So what I started doing, I'm also... I call it the attention deficit disorder generation. We got to, if you can't communicate quickly mm -hmm. to someone and simply you lose the person. Mm -hmm. So I wanted a really simple name, mm -hmm. no more than two syllables. So I started trying all these, these, these different combinations um, to get a name that had just only one or two syllables uh -huh. and the domain name was available. Oh, and okay. so, yes, my last name is Norens. Uh -huh. And so, I found NOR and then put the number one because I am an entrepreneur and I thought there's probably going to be a NOR two, three, or four someday. <laughs> NOR one was born. Oh, so wow. That's where it came from. I bet people ask you that question quite often. Yes. Okay. Um, let me hold that thought for a little bit. So what brought you to Hawaii? I presume it's kind of related to your business. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, working in the hospitality industry, you know, this is one of the preeminent places in the planet mm -hmm. as far as uh, hotels, mm -hmm. resorts, and the like. And so we have a lot of our, our big customers have a lot of properties here. Mm -hmm. So um, that would bring me here regularly. Mm -hmm. But then what really took my heart is spending time with the people mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it is just one giant ohana. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the Hawaiian people. I love their energy. I'm a big outdoors person, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I used to be a big windsurfer. Now I've, you guys have gotten me into surfing. And um, I love to hike. And so, yeah, and, 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 and I love the, the concept about um, kind of we're all one mm -hmm. and how do you raise all ships. And uh, I'm a big believer that uh, it's the we, not the I. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think that Hawaii embodies that. You, it's a, a very diverse population you know, from all over the world, a beautiful kind of mix, too, with Asian culture, everything. So I'm, I, you know, kinda, I just 
fell in love with it here. So That's great. Now, um, I know that I made this comment. I'll say that again. Sometimes we live here, we take a lot of things for granted. But thank you for reminding us of how <laughs> wonderful it is to live here. And it is true. Um, tell us the people that you've met here. So um, I'm going to specifically, first of all, to all of you, all of my the Nor One customers here in Hawaii, we thank you for your business and <laughs> love all of you guys. But I, I specifically want to share um, two individuals that, that I've met here. Is I went into a shaved ice store um, in Aina Haina about three years ago, and I met this gentleman um, named Uncle Clay. Mm -hmm. And the shaved ice store is called House of Pure Aloha. And I met this gentleman, and I felt I'd known him for my whole life. Um, I call him my Hanai father. And uh, he's got a huge heart and, and the energy. I, you know, I'm not getting paid by House of Pure Law to say this. They're just, it's an amazing, they're just amazing people. The, the energy that's created, the family, the ohana that they've created there has been amazing. And so I fell in love with him and what he was doing and his business partner, a gentleman named Bronson Chang. And they've been so kind to me too, welcoming me into their ohana. And so I've been involved, um, you know, how do we take the pure aloha spirit, this very special, special gift that, that the people in Hawaii has, and, and take that around the world. Because I think if we had more pure aloha on this planet, we'd have a much more peaceful planet, and it would raise all ships. So um, just has been very, very positive. My gosh, uh, you make it, it, it's such a nice feeling to hear that. Um, yeah, I, I think I need that every day. <laughs> just a reminder. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've met uh, Uncle Clay. I don't know him personally, but he's always very friendly. And I remember a long conversation he had with my son. We went in to buy shave ice. So I think he does that to everybody, but he is able to make people feel really special. And I think we have a lot of those people here. No, I think the key is it, it's, it's sincerity and mm -hmm. being authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, every individual that, that Uncle Clay meets, every individual that Bronson Chang, it's mm -hmm. from the heart. There's no, they're not looking for anything. It's just pure, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And I think it embodies a lot of the people that I've met here um, uh, on the island, including yourself. The, the day we met and I was on campus talking uh, to students, um, you know, there's a sincerity and authenticity that you immediately feel. And um, for someone that's also, I've spent a lot of time with a lot of people all over the planet, mm -hmm. which good people all over, there's just this very, very special energy here. And you know it when you see it and you feel it. We do have that here, but thank you. Um, now let's move back to perhaps the entrepreneur community here. I know sure. that you, you're not here only for your business, but you're probably doing a lot of other things. You, um, you said you're on the board of uh, Uncle Clay's business, right? Correct. Okay. Um, what about the rest of the entrepreneur community? Um, do you do anything with them? So I, at the University mm -hmm. of Hawaii, um, I'm, I'm big on mentorship. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, that was very helpful for me as mm -hmm. my career grew. Mm -hmm. You know, I had these big dreams of building this company and taking a concept from idea to reality. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I didn't know how to do that. Um, you know, I have a, I've got a really loving, great family, but a lot of medicine, mostly physicians. And so um, it's, 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 it's important to be able to surround yourself with people that have seen the movie and seen it recently. So um, a big part of, you know, what I like to do is also to, to give back to what I was given uh, through my career. So at University of Hawaii, you know, I do mentorship for some of the students. Oh. Um, and then I'm also I, I'm, I'm you know involved with the with the House of Pure Aloha. Mm -hmm. I, I think you know there there's just something very very special there in many different aspects. Mm -hmm. Everything from uh, farm to table, they, they're, you know everything that they have as far as what they put in the shaved ice is from local farms. Mm -hmm. I'm big about sustainability, and um, so you know those are some of the things that I'm involved here in the, the Hawaiian community, and only want to get more involved. Um. Let's see. I guess the other question is: You've been to you've been to many countries. You've met a lot of entrepreneurs. You've done a lot of mentoring. Um, do you think you can comment on perhaps the entrepreneurial environment here? Uh, we certainly feel that there are a lot of challenges. But as an outsider, what do you see about the community here in Hawaii? 
You know what's interesting? In this mm -hmm. last couple years, I'd say in this last five years, mm -hmm. the state of Hawaii as a whole has gotten much more active in, in, in basically attracting mm -hmm. entrepreneurs here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that the state has always known they have something very special, the geography, the, the climate, and everything else. But, um, you know, they've created incubators here in Honolulu. Um, there's been funds set up uh, to, you know, uh, seed fund, um, you know, new ideas. Um, there's been, in these incubators, mentors, individuals like myself that um, they've attracted mm -hmm. that have maybe built their company elsewhere, and now they're, they've come here to kind of retire and, and mentor. But having those individuals, that that brain trust is invaluable, and, and I've seen where Hawaii has been very progressive in attracting some of the top talent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I only see it growing even mm -hmm. more. And and um, and I also like it. This is not only just pulling from the mainland. This is pulling from the international community. This is, and it's not just Asia. It's also Europe. Mm -hmm. I have uh, some of my friends that are, are moving their respective companies um, from Europe or, or or the mainland here because of the quality of life. Mm -hmm. And um, as you start getting these critical masses, then you get more you know, the education, more programmers, and, and it kind of builds on itself. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's 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 exciting. It's you know, it's 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 evolved greatly. You know, is it Silicon Valley? No, but it's 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 the close proximity to a Silicon Valley. There is like a pipe that's mm -hmm. connected, mm -hmm. and um, it's amazing how many of my colleagues, friends, are traveling here, whether it be on vacation, but also getting involved in the entrepreneurial community here um, on a regular basis. So yeah, very cool. No, you know, really, this is so good to hear that from you because I think. Um, I guess at the beginning, we, we talk about successful entrepreneurs. They're always from Silicon Valley. And we are a small state here, and I think we have this, uh, I guess, inferiority complex. We always say, OK, we're not good because all of all these reasons. But you just listed all the great things that we should be proud of. So I hope you come back and um, remind all these uh, budding entrepreneurs that uh, we have a lot to uh, going on for us here, right? Yes. Now, um, we're coming on our second break. Uh, we've talked a lot about you as a creator, a builder, an entrepreneur, but you have a lot of other passions as well. Um, traveling and your um, paying forward, um, your philanthropic initiatives. So I'd like to find out a little bit more about that um, when we come back from our break. Fantastic. Wonderful. My guest today is Art Norens, founder and CEO of Nor One from Silicon Valley. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. We'll be right back after the break. Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu, and I co-host Hawaii Farmers Series with Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. We talk about Hawaii's local farmers and their supporters. In order to have a vibrant and sustainable local food system, uh, farmers are always the foundation, but there's so many other people uh, involved in the community that help support those farmers. So we bring those folks onto our show every Thursday at 4 p.m. We get their backstory, their history, find out a little more about them, and we find out why they love what they do and their perspective and their advice on how we can continue to have a dynamic and vibrant and sustainable local food system. So we, again, we broadcast live every Thursday at 4 p.m. And you can also catch us on ThinkTech's YouTube channel as well as Alelo54. So we hope you tune in and join us. Thank you. And I didn't hear until the Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. If you're just joining us, my guest today is Art Norens, founder and executive chairman of Nor One. So before the break, we talked about your journey to entrepreneurship, the things that you're currently doing in Hawaii, and things that you would like to do more, including mentoring and trying to foster the next generation of entrepreneurs. So now about your other passions. <laughs> now, of course, I remember you when you um, were at the presentation, your TEDx presentation. You said, um, get a passport. That's the best thing next to having a kid, right? So tell us about that. So as I, as I shared with you earlier on, mm. you know, 
I love people, and I've been very fortunate, very grateful that um, starting from a young age, actually my, my parents uh, took me on a, a lot of their travels, especially my, my dad did a lot of international engagements, so I got exposed at a uh, young age to international travel, and I got the international bug, mm. and, and only loved people more and the different ethnicities, religions, and everything else, and so, uh, you know, been very honored and that I've gotten to travel over a hundred countries um, and, and, and had the opportunity to live you know in all these different places whether it be in Europe um, not specifically got to have a residence in Asia but I flew there so often I feel it's, that's that's home also um, and so you know that's a very much uh, a passion of mine what bubbled out of that though at the same time is awareness and mm -hmm. understanding I think the, the more you start traveling um, you know, most of us, or at least I, you get your information from the media that's put in front of you, yeah. and I'm, I'm not here to, to um, say that that media is not bad, but I, I really, as Alice said, get yourself a passport and get yourself on a plane and go to, go to the Middle East, go to Africa, go to Argentina, go to Asia, meet with the people, see the people, see what's going on, um, and let you come to your own growth and understanding of what's going on in this little planet that we call Earth. You know, we, we have the Hawaiian Islands, it's this little island. Well, we're a little island also, this planet Earth in the great universe. And so, you know, you start seeing how fortunate we are here mm -hmm. in, in the United we States. And, um, and, you know, you have 700 million people that go to bed every night without food, and, and you start really seeing that firsthand. You, you start thinking about how are we spending our priorities and our time. So, you know, a, a big part of, you know, I kind of look at um, having a birthday tomorrow on October 23rd and kind of get into that midpoint of my, my life. And mm -hmm. so how do I want to spend the back half of my life is, 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 is tackling some of these really major problems that we, we face as, 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 as one big ohana on this little marble flying mm -hmm. through the universe, whether it be access to education, whether it be access to health care. Um, and a myriad of other issues. And mm -hmm. so it's been interesting how my international travel passion has evolved more into this, how do we raise all ships on this planet? That's interesting. Um, now, I, I know you are involved in some kind of uh, global health, um, I'm sorry, from Indiana. Uh, yes. Can you tell us about that? And I don't quite remember what that center is. So I'm on the board of the Indiana Institute of Global Health, mm -hmm. um, which is a tr just a, an unbelievable privilege and honor. Um, Similar to the, the respect I have, like for Uncle Clay and, mm -hmm. and Bronson Chang, um, this is the ties that I had with my my, my family being a lot of medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so they're doing a lot of work, uh, the Indiana Medical Center, along with, and this is what I love. It's a, a giant collaboration of some of the top medical programs in the country, from mm -hmm. from Duke University to to Brown to um, Purdue University, mm -hmm. um, Toronto. Is they've gone into um, Kenya into it's a it's a, an area it's called Eldoret which is um, in the northwest uh, quadrant of, of Kenya and it's one of the highest concentration of, of HIV positive patients oh. and um, have been working extensively in eradicating HIV and so the the team there has um, been you know delivering um, um, you know, access to health care mm -hmm. to this part of the, the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working very closely with the Kenyan government, the people of Kenya. And that's also what I, I'm also I'm really, really big about collaboration and working together, not, not uh, giving people food, how you teach them to fish for food. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm involved in. And they, they, they got me involved more because of my, my business and, oh. and running, you know, from a professional management standpoint, because a lot of the people that are involved in this program are physicians, and so amazing, world-class physicians, but th this organization is huge, you know, this is, you know, a $70 million budget backed by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, it's, it's an amazing program. So how do you find time to do that, and how does it tie in with, uh, with NOR1 then? Um, you know, it's interesting. Our, our, our tagline from NOR1 um, is called Upgrade mm -hmm. Your Life. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I've always envisioned NOR1 is much more than um, room upgrades or business intelligence analytics. Mm -hmm. Don't min I'm not minimizing that. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, we're really proud of the technology and what we've built. Um, but going back to who I am in my heart and my core, it's, it's, it's the people. And how do we elevate all ships? So. Um, I had a really unique opportunity because um, I, I also like to push myself in different areas 
because uh, that's how you grow. Mm -hmm. And and because of you know the medicine in my family, um, I know my, my my father had already spoken always spoken very highly of a gentleman named Joe Manlin who runs the program along with Bob Einters, mm -hmm. and um, they're up for the Nobel Peace Prize. And wow. and um, so I was like, what? This is one in an opportunity to get. It would be great to meet them. And so you know, fortunately, I. I've been able, pretty, been good at balancing a lot of things, and and people know with Nor One, I'm more effective as a leader and, and driver the more I'm exposed to other things. So, does the things that I'm doing in Kenya and on the board there directly, you know, translate into room upgrades at your Hilton Hawaiian Village? Mm -hmm. um, probably not, but the insights that um, you know that that that. I'm gaining and learning along with our team because a lot of our team, I, we're a big supporter of that they're involved in other things in the community. Um, we're, we're exploring how some of the room upgrade revenue can go towards local, wow. um, you know, community um, services and 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 and, and shelters and, and the like. So we want to be out of the box and how do we make a win-win-win proposition for for all? So. It's not direct, but I think you understand the link. I do, um, and it's amazing from you coming from Silicon Valley, and I've interviewed uh, some other in entrepreneurs locally, um, but I think the big thing for them is really what they can do, what they can, how they can make a difference. Um, I remember interviewing this uh, young woman who opened up a chocolate company. Mm -hmm. She's doing really well, but a certain percentage of her revenue, um, sh she puts it into some kind of community service overseas. Um, and uh, there's another jewelry business who does something similar. Sh he puts a lot of his um, revenue into helping local um, charities. So it it's really fascinating to talk to you and all these entrepreneurs, you are indeed a rare species, I think. Well, I just real quick, I just tonight I'm going to an art show in, mm -hmm. in, in, in downtown, I think right down the street from where we're, the studio is here. And, and uh, so one of my friends is, she's a great artist. And, and so the proceeds of the, the sales of this, uh, the sale of this art, mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of it is going to at-risk kids here mm -hmm. in Honolulu to surfing classes. So we have entrepreneurs in all different shapes and forms, yes. and they're very much alive here in, in, in Honolulu. Too, so. um, you've done a lot and it sounds like it, you still have a lot to do, but um, I guess you're at a stage where you can look back. So tell me um, now with all the experience you've uh, garnered and the people you've met, you know, if you could go back and do something differently, what would they be? So Thank you for asking me this question. Actually, this is actually my favorite question. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm talking to you guys in the audience at all ages. It doesn't matter <laughs> your age. I don't care if you're 90 or you're 15 or 20. Um, you can move mountains. I'm a, I'm a big believer in dream big and have confidence in yourself to make those uh, dreams reality. And so if I was talking to the Art Norns of when I was 10 or 15 years old, what I would tell him is, Art, you can move mountains, and and it's taken my journey through life to show me that I can. You know, I'm very proud of what I built, and um, and so the knowledge that I have now too of actually since I've traveled so much, and so, is why we are on a very small planet. Mm -hmm. From 1950 to 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 2050, we're going up seven billion people, and we have some real issues that we need to work through. And if I could tell the art at at 15 years old is in, instead of starting the air conditioning company that I started, the internet company that I started, not that I'm minimizing the importance and I love what we've done there and, and it's great, is, you know, I'd love to have started a biotech company um, and maybe help try to, you know, you know, come up with a cure for cancer mm -hmm. um, and, and, and focus my time and energy on something where I could see really the direct impact that, you know, that addresses extreme poverty and some of the major issues that we have. And so as you're figuring out what you want to do with your career and where you want to go, tackle the biggest issues on the planet because we are, we are all one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you can do amazing things. And so that's what I'm going to be doing the second half of my life now that I have the insight that I have from the first half of my, my life. That's interesting. Now, you know how at the beginning you said you're kind of different from your other sisters. Um, but you said that if you could do it again, you would do it do bio 
um, engineering, that kind of thing. So it's, you know, you going back to your roots. Going back to their, what I, what I, I'm very fortunate and very mm -hmm. grateful. My, my family, my, my friend, big hearts. The common thread that you'll see in every, at, 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 the, at NOR1, at the air conditioning company is these people have big hearts. They really care about someone else other than themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm really now appreciating more and more the contribution that my siblings have made in, 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 in a day to day, you know, delivering health care. Um, is extremely important, and so yeah, I am going. You're, you're very insightful and in going back to the roots, <laughs> but with the entrepreneurial experience of and knowledge course. that I have and relationships. Right, you have to go through that. It's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey. Um, you've kind of answered that question. Um, I was going to ask you. You know, besides people and all those experience, why? Um, you know, if I were to ask you, why do you think you're so successful? Um, you know, I don't, sometimes I, I, you know, success can be determined or defined in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think a lot of our society looks at, you know, financial and so forth, because mm -hmm. that's easy to, it's easier to touch and feel. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times the success is impact mm -hmm. and direct impact. I, I, I draw that parallel with House of Pure Aloha is, um, you know, Uncle Clay, I don't, I don't think he's a billionaire, <laughs> um, but the impact I, I, that I think he's made on this community and, and the people that go into his store, you'll live, it's much more than shaved ice. So, um, you know, that uh, you know, success can, as I said, can, can be um, you know, defined in, in, in many different ways. And so, um, you know, that's a that's a good that's a good kind of question that um, you need to yeah, think it yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 a, it's a good question. Thank you. Well, um, I wish you a happy birthday tomorrow, and thank you so much for coming. And I lo really look forward to hearing Nor One and perhaps um, all your mentees who would benefit from your experience. So, thank you for coming to Hawaii, and thank you for coming to my show. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Great. Mahalo. Thanks. My guest today is Art Norens, founder and executive chairman of Nor One from the Silicon Valley. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Uh, do join us for our program next week. Aloha.